Hello, welcome to uh, the final instant reaction of the season, assuming Florida State doesn't get um, grandfathered into some sort of bowl game off of a 5-7 and seven season. So, welcome. Florida State lost to Florida 24-21 to earlier today. I was in Gainesville. That's why this instant reaction is less instant. Um, I drove all the way back and hopped on the computer as soon as I could. So, uh, AB, you got to you got to watch it from a vantage point. I did not get to watch it from, so uh, just go ahead and tell me how you felt about this uh, and and where you stand on this team. Um, how do I feel about it? Uh, I felt like Florida let you hang around most of the game. I felt like this was the first game this year where it felt like the uh, the the game itself was too big for this team like they didn't really i didn't feel like they knew how to handle the uh the status of this game i didn't feel like they knew how to handle what was going on the rivalry aspect of it i thought they really struggled with that aspect i didn't think that they were sure sorry i didn't think that they were prepared well enough um to handle this rivalry, which is odd because they handled the Miami game so much better earlier, but maybe that's because that was a home game. And this was your true first true road rivalry environment. Um, so maybe that's what was going on there. I'm not sure. Uh, Mike definitely, Mike definitely hyped this one up this week and put a lot into it. Um, I, I, I don't know. It seems like maybe that backfired. I'm not sure. You were you were there, uh, and maybe you could speak to that the energy in the stadium and what it seemed like was going on the silent and that kind of stuff. Maybe you could speak to that a little bit better. Uh, you know, you you start off on offense and first drive's not so hot. Then you're moving the ball. Jordan gets hurt. Then you go three drives. Um, what was it turnover punt punt? Uh, really just kind of bogged everything down. I thought yeah. offensively really kind of got you out of where you wanted to be. And then you're behind, so you're playing from behind. That's not the position this team's great at. And we talked about the offensive line, and we talked about the potential issues that were going to be there. And guess what? They showed up. Uh, you know, I mean, another, another week where you couldn't really run the football that successfully. Um, yeah, I mean, the short passing game for Florida was as successful as we kind of talked about it maybe potentially being I didn't think Adam Fuller had his best coach game today. Um, and we've yeah. been, and we've been supporting him quite heavily here again lately. Uh, and he's been getting a lot, heaped a lot of praise recently. And I thought that uh, the Florida really kind of exposed their under coverage today and really kind of attacked that area. Didn't let the defensive line dominate them. And then they went out and just attacked. I thought they attacked Jamie Robinson a lot. I thought they attacked Lundy a lot a gainer a lot um, and had a lot of success in those areas. And, you know, they had three turnovers and I think you're three turnovers away from them putting up probably 30 on your defense, which that's not a very good, that's not a good enough offense to go out to do that, but you did get those turnovers. So, I mean, it is what it is. You could say if you don't get them, what if something happens, but you did get them, which is good. It's good. You're able to create them, but you weren't able to capitalize on them at all. Partly because that's when Jordan was out of the game. Um, I thought you did okay stopping the run game. I, mean, I didn't think they ran the ball that effectively. Um, I wouldn't say that that was something that they did great, and they were gr and they were a good running team. I thought you really spent a lot of time worrying about the quarterback running the football, and it didn't really, just didn't run a lot. I mean, they kind of they, they went to it more with Anthony Richardson at the end, but Emory Jones yeah. was not was not yeah. moving. No, and he wasn't taking off either. Like, he wasn't looking to run those those uh, secondary runs uh, from the pocket. He wasn't looking for that either. They had a couple draws. They had a couple uh, replays with him um, out, of, out of some of their two-back stuff that uh, Florida State adjusted to. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. What were your thoughts, Kev? I, that, that was a frustrating game. Yeah, for me, um, it kind of looked like an early season game rather than a late season game, and that was what was disappointing to me. Yeah. Um, I could have handled the loss a little bit better if I felt like Florida showed up and just outplayed you. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think their offense did much to win that game, but neither did yours. Um, yeah. But at, at the end of the day, that game, we kind of came down to what we, we thought it would, which was 
kind of what a lot of these games have come down to. Uh, you have to win the special teams, and you have to win the turnover and the mistake battle. So uh, between turnovers and penalties and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I don't think you convincingly won the turnover battle. The single-handedly, uh, the muffed punt there at the end is not only a turnover, but a negative 60-yard turnover. Uh, that's a game killer on a slog fest like this one. Yep. Um, your special teams just, like, I want to sit here and criticize the defense, but I think you played a pretty pretty okay offense here. Um mm-hmm. And you were holding them. You were doing a great job holding them, holding them probably about as well as anybody has all season. Um, you stopped them at their own nine-yard line, forced a punt. Then you had to step back on the field because of a muffed punt. Yeah. Then your quarterback throws an interception three plays later, yeah. you know, and you're back on the field. So the the defense was on the field the entirety of the third quarter, um, and that's just really tough. And mm-hmm. that's what I, I, I said this a couple days ago, or yesterday on our, our preview. And I think it's something I want to continue saying because it's something that needs to be said is that uh, people do not put enough emphasis on how field position and special teams influences how a defense has to react and defensive numbers, right? Uh, it's easy to look at a score and be like, they gave up X points, but that doesn't tell the full story. Um, so... <sighs> This is uh, before before I get too far into the weeds of this game. Um, this is something I've kind of been telling myself from a, from a fan perspective um, to not be too down about this performance. Uh, to me, this season for Florida feels a lot like 2017 was for Florida State. Uh, you got a coach that kind of checks out by the end of the season. Recruiting drops off. You drop a few games you shouldn't drop. Um, all the advanced metrics still love you, but you can tell that something's off about this team. Um, it's easy to think, hey, if we just replace this coach, uh, all of our problems will be fixed and we should be back to being a 10-win team here soon, um, which is exactly what we thought at 2017 and exactly what a lot of the Florida fans are saying now. Um, but it, it kind of feels like that kind of season for them, and uh, I would be shocked if they bounced back and won 10, 10 games next year, but they could. Uh, but in that 2017 game, that 2017 season, Florida State beat Florida. Despite going 7-6 and six on the season, Florida State won that game. And it was no indication of the future trajectories of those programs, right? Florida ended up winning 10 games two seasons later, and Florida State's been in a divot ever since. So while this is a disappointing performance and not where you want to be, um, don't get gl- – doom and gloom about this um it's not a f- indication necessarily of of the future trajectory of this program just because you came up short on the road against a team that was supposed to be a top 10 team at the beginning of the season um but um assuming they can hold together this recruiting class that's that's what we've been saying from the beginning is the most important thing is you got travis hunter isn't going to muff that punt no travis hunter's gonna house that point because that punt was Way over kicked. By the way, how about that kid? That kid had the game of his life today. He's not been good at all, all year long. Yep. And today he hits a 60 yarder, that one. I mean, he kicked the piss out of that ball. Um, it just, hey, look, that's just the way these rivalry games go. And uh, we're all frustrated. I'm not going to lose sight on the, the fact that this team got better this year. They showed growth this year. They showed, they showed some stuff to, to, to recruits and to portal get kids that are, are young men that they can sell. They've shown that they're willing to get the character back into this program. I think that that was a big win for them. You're not going to be teaching character. Um, I think they learned an important lesson in that Jacksonville state game this year for the coaches staff themselves to make sure that they treat every, every instance uh, like it's like it's the last one they're going to get. Um, so I, I, there was a lot of things that went right this year. The, you know, obviously the, the outcome, the record is not where we want it to be, but I mean, hell, most people at the beginning of the season were in the beginning of the year, were in a five and seven, six and six range. And you went five and seven, you, you, you found yourself, you found yourself there. So it wasn't pretty. I know you should have beaten Jacksonville state and going six and six and all that stuff, but 
when push comes to shove, a lot of the pro- prognosticators for this football program and ourselves included were in that five and seven, six and six range, and that's where you ended up. Um, so they got a lot of work to do. You know, Mike, uh, what's up, Mike? Always, always showing love. Um, they got a lot of work to do. They got to get, they got to get better in the off season. They've, they've got to really exhaust themselves in that weight room. They've got to go out and get guys that are twitchy and they can run and jump and do all those things and, and get them and get them in the weight room and get them ready to go. The biggest thing is just keep this recruiting class together. Get a kid like Travis Hunter in your offense you know, on your defense, wherever you're going to play him. Get a kid like Sam McCall on the field. These are, these are game changing type players. I don't think the talent was the difference today. Um, I think the depth was probably a big part of the difference, really. It doesn't help. <laughs> when push comes to shove, you know, wide receiver is what it is. It's been an issue all year. I don't think Sean Corbin was necessarily healthy. And uh, we all love the story of this Sean Ward, but he's not a guy that can go out and give you 25 carries. Um, you know, your offensive line depth was a problem. You had to play – you know, it continues to be a problem. It's an area they really need to hit hard, and you're bringing probably going to bring in eight offensive linemen, and you know, in this class with some portal kids and some high school guys, and we'll see what else. But the, you know, your 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 line really just kind of killed you, and it's something we knew Wet coming in. Paper is yeah. how I describe that offensive line. When you couldn't run, we said it yesterday. When you couldn't run against BC, that was a red flag, um, and then you just couldn't run the ball today. They had a couple three-yard runs and stuff like that, but you just – this offense has got to be able to run the football. Jordan can't throw the ball 40 times. Um, as much as I think that he's grown there, uh, you just can't rely on him to do that. That's not his game. It's not his strength, and it's not the strength of these receivers. I mean, look, you throw five consecutive balls to Andrew Parchment, and he can't figure out how to, how to catch the thing. So, um, yeah. Um, to, frustrating. To, to get in the weeds a little bit. Um, I love the weeds. <laughs> can we talk about what was going on on defensively on you us had a better them uh, us you had a better you had a better vantage point of that than, than we did there was a horrible camera angle most of the game oh really yeah how, how are they so successful in some of these under throws i mean jamie jamie robinson had 18 tackles today so jamie I know robinson, they, were, they were playing him a lot of dime backer right jamie robinson was playing a ton of safety I know, I know. A few times I saw him down in the box at, 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 as a dime backer, but oh, you did. Just, um, yeah. I thought it was weird. I saw him at Bandit a few times, and so that's that kind of stood out to me. Yeah. Uh, they hit this several times, um, and you're you're hoping that your safety comes up and makes a tackle, and he and he did, and they caught that several times, kind of in traffic. Um, I felt like if they went to that well one or two more times. Um, that was going to be a pick. Uh, I didn't see. So, okay, that third and 18 or whatever it was, 20 something. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was because I didn't. The stadium wasn't very consistent. Uh, they they kind of did a <clears throat> smash concept, I think. And because Florida State plays a, a variant of cover four. Uh, this guy was open, right? So this Sam would ride him, leaving this guy open, and they would hit him. <clears throat> and he just broke two tackles to get 26 yards. So that's not really on the, the play call there. It's more on, I mean, that's what you expect. You play cover four. You If they throw it underneath, you rally and you tackle, and they didn't. Um, but outside of that, I mean, I really don't think Florida had that much success. They kept getting the ball at the 50-yard line. Like, yeah. Um, realistically, our problem on offense to me was, was exactly what I said would be the problem if, if we couldn't get this sorted out. But like, if you, they went, they went five wide a few times and they were forced to keep a guy in tight. They were forced to keep a wing to trip, to chip an end, which kills you. Oh, by the end of the game, they were having... Jordan Wilson man on their ends because they trusted Jordan Wilson to block their ends more than our tackles to block yeah, their yeah. ends. Yeah, it's pretty bad. That's insane. That's insanity. Yep. yep. These these five guys, I, I don't want to harp on anything, but these five guys made it so you could not move this football. Mm-hmm. 
Florida could basically do this, and there was nothing you could do about it. Yep. These guys were going to win here, 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 and all the their whole goal was to just not lose contain, and um, then they would play some some zone behind it and have these guys watching Jordan Travis. And yeah, what are you going to do? You know, if you can't block them and they've got extra men in coverage because they're only bringing three or four, uh, they they challenge you to to win there and you you couldn't and it meant that your offense was immobile mm-hmm. yep you were stuck you were stuck in that box they tried to move the pocket a little bit for jordan but again when you move the pocket a lot you take away half the field and that's not a that's not an effective strategy for the whole game um yeah i think there's some self scouting that need to be done about this offense but shit, they've got to get their offense in um some of that's got to be they got to get healthy on the O line. They got to get they got to get depth in there. Guys that can play consistently, game in game out. Um, you know, again, it was a hindrance to you at the end of the season, like it's been for us the last five, six, seven years. So that's something they got to really get figured out uh, and I get thought, some depth in there. I thought the but, defensive line actually got some decent pocket pressure. It's just that their quarterbacks had a better idea of when to get rid of the ball than ours did. Yeah, I thought Jordan held the ball. A couple of times. You can't that, take those sacks. No, and you can't not get down on that ugh, that end of the half play. That was that was that was brutal. You you were as horrible as that half went. You had an opportunity to had a kick to go up ten to seven in halftime, and I really thought that would have kind of given you momentum going into the half. And for him not to get down there, not to recognize the time that's on the clock, get get three yards slide, get the timeout called. I thought that was a backbreaker for you. Um yeah, yeah, Gator Kirk's talking about it right now. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was brutal because you did a great job of getting into position to be able to kick the field goal. You needed to go because I think it was still a little long for Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick there. Um, Jordan just got to get down him. He's got to know the clock. But look, I mean, he's still young. He's technically a what a redshirt sophomore or something like that. Yeah, but he's like a fourth year college. Yeah, player this uh, way. I know. yeah, yeah, I know. Um, the biggest thing that stood out to me, though, my biggest takeaway from the game was I just didn't think that they handled the uh, game very well. I just didn't think that they handled it well. I didn't think that they – first, I thought they they came out and were kind of flat. Um, Florida's O-line was kind of getting off the ball on our D-line pretty good early. Just made me kind of scratch my head, like, where's the energy at? I don't know if they, the whole uh, the whole uh, brush brush up there at the in the pregame got to them or – if they just kind of left all their energy out on the field and warm ups, not really sure. Um, I mean, I know they had a great week of practice. I know that I know that that's a fact. And they were they were prepared for the game, uh, and then then I just thought the rivalry got the best of them. Florida was kind of able to poke and prod them into every little stupid mistake that they could, and ultimately killed you. Um, yeah, they were really they were. I was there. It was a pretty chippy game the whole time, um, and Florida Florida knew. To push our buttons. Um, yep. I think that's always been the the storyline between us and Florida is yeah. uh, they just they just push push Florida State's buttons because they know that um, you know we we tend to be less disciplined and I was kind of disappointed that uh, I don't have the penalty penalty yardage out here but with them not having a coaching staff I was really ha- hoping that we would just dominate dominate them in the penalty game and, and we really didn't. Um, yeah. I think we did end up winning on penalty yards by the end, but it it wasn't by enough. Um, this is the killer for me. Uh, average starting field position, 20 versus 34. So they they on average started 14 yards closer to our end yeah. zone. Than it's huge. Started. It's huge. And add in the I fact that I think we had an extra turnover compared yeah. to them. But um, Master Mono has a 10-yard punt. Gosh. He had two brilliant I, punts and then two garbage punts. I, I know people like him and like him as a punter. I would that the kicker and punter two positions. I would be looking at the portal hard at. I, I don't, I don't see it with him. I know it's great he can kick with both feet, all that nonsense. I, you know, special punter when you see one. I don't think he's a special punter. I think he's just an average punter. Um, I'd, I'd be looking to upgrade that position. It just would be looking to find somebody that can get into a 60 yarder every once in a while that field position is big um project you know, our penalty is nine for 90 I all right so 
So there were some offsetting ones in there, obviously. Um, <laughs> our penalties just seemed like they were the dumbest damn times, and it was frustrating. It but genuinely felt like two teams, neither of which wanted to win, and yeah. we wanted to win less. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I – don't disagree with you. Which is very disappointing because it felt like if you could hang your hat on anything at the end of the season for this team, it was they weren't going to beat themselves. Yeah. And the fact that they they kind of did beat themselves is what was disappointing, right? The muffed kick, the Mm -hmm. flubbed onside kick. I mean, that didn't lose to the game, but that was just embarrassing. Um, That was embarrassing. That's that's meme central right there. That's going to be all over Sports Center, and that's just embarrassing. You know, whatever that. Like yeah, you just don't beat yourself, man. I thought we were yep. getting over this. Like, yep. to to be honest, you you mentioned the the atmosphere in the first half. It was dead. It was full, but it was dead. Like, you could tell that a lot of the Florida fans had no hope, and they were like, "Oh, this is garbage," you know. Um, Emory Jones stinks, throwing three picks. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, as soon as you gave them momentum and gave them a reason to be in the game, they were in the game, and. Um, yeah, I think I think it really hurt that you lost Jordan Travis for that first half. Yeah. Uh, if I see anybody's name on here on Twitter telling me that we would have done whatever if we had Chuba in the game instead of <laughs> Tate Rodemaker, who had one completion for seven yards after can offensive I, pass can interference. I, can I ask you what your emotions were when Tate came in the game? You mean touchdown Tate? <laughs> yeah. How excited was, were you? I was. How, ex- how excited were you? Go ahead. I was Come pretty. On, I was. I was ready for him to prove some people wrong because the kid can make throws. And then he did. Well, he had an offensive pass interference I know, play one. I know. And then it's first Andrew. and 25, and he didn't get Peak a first Andrew. down on first and 25, and you take Peak him out. Peak Andrew Parchment, right? I mean, how many offensive pass interferences did he have today? I think there was two at least. There were two. Um, I was kind of disappointed that the coaching staff called another potential pick play after they had yeah. already been called OPI. Like – there's some refs that won't call OPI, so yep. you continue running the pick plays. There are some refs that will always call the OPI. I wouldn't test the same guy twice on it. Yeah. All right, so Funk says, can we all agree that special teams need to be taken away from Papuchas? I don't know. I mean, because they were really good last year. Well, it doesn't make any sense. I don't. I, yeah, we thought I, that would be a strength. I am of the belief that the talent level on your special teams is not good at all. Um and you're playing a lot of your depth pieces that we know are garbage. You're playing walk-ons. Uh, yeah, garbage, our, is, garbage isn't fair. That's not fair for me to say. But um, guys that just aren't as talented as what you need them to be, I, I think I would. I think I would see what you got next year, and then after that, maybe make a make, make a move there if it doesn't get any better. Do you guys think those game was a one-off? Yeah, I think it's a one-off. Um, I, I do. I don't. I don't think this, this will be. This isn't the same Florida State we saw for the past several weeks. So. It was disappointing they didn't come out and, and perform the way that yeah. we're hoping they would. I think losing Jordan Travis for a, a significant amount of time in the first half and then Mackenzie Milton thank that kid for everything he's done for this program over the past yep. year. But Offer he was him a in GA for like, job and if he wants to go to Ole Miss, bye. He was in for like eight plays and I don't know if you could have made a worse eight plays, to be honest with you. Um right. yeah, I agree. And so that really handicapped you when your defense was getting turnovers and, and playing out of their mind. Um, getting a little luck. Getting a little luck. Emory Jones was playing like complete garbage. Okay, that, that one pick on the flea flicker was total luck. Um, yeah, yeah. The other two picks but were that was genuinely pressure, but, great plays. I mean, but the, there was pressure in his face. I mean, he, he had to get rid of that because of pressure. Um, so either way, n- nonetheless, yeah, I, I do think the game was a one-off. I don't think that this is – I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to show up again at some point. We don't know. I mean, you may not get a – maybe we don't get a defensive end in the portal this year and our dog meet again next year. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, the portal – they're going to need to do well in the portal again. They've got to replace, A, some leadership on that defensive line. Uh, you could be losing Cooper, Lovett, uh, Keir, and uh, Jermaine Johnson. Which Can we keep at least one of those guys? <laughs> I think Lovett's the only one you got a shot at. Not um, Cooper? Is he a senior? I think Cooper's going to what? He, he, I think he's going to, I think he's going to try the NFL. Good he's luck. Try the, yeah. um, we'll see. I mean, he's been in college for a, long, you know, a bunch of years now. He put out a kind of a cryptic tweet after the game 
thanking the program and everything. We'll see. You need to do whatever it needs to be done to keep uh, Fabian Lovett around, though, if you can. Oh, if we got Fabian Lovett back, that's a uh, game changer. Help the interior. Would help the interior big time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the interior defensive line backups necessarily are, are the weakest. Um, you just don't have that one true pass rusher uh, after this year. So I think you'll be okay without hitting a home run like on a defensive tackle, but I feel like you need that pass rusher to make things a little bit uh, easier for everybody else on the defense. Yep, I agree. Uh, um, I'd like to get some JUCO or transfer guys on the offensive line. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, they got they got Bless Harris, uh, the tackle coming in. I think he's at worst a rotational piece. At best, he's going to be a starter for you. Um, I know they would like to get an interior uh, interior offensive line maybe a center uh, at some point. And, and guys, we're going to have – we'll probably have Josh Newberg, Zach Blostein, uh, some of the three stars on here in the coming weeks to talk about recruiting and what's going on. So we'll, we'll hit on this a lot more. Those guys are the experts on this stuff. Um, shout out to Josh and Tim and David. They do a great job with the, the uh, three stars uh, on Tomahawk Nation. Uh, the recruiting is obviously going to be a big, big thing that we need to be focusing on here in December and they need to hit a home run because they've got some talent, talent they got to replace. I do think the talent level on the offense a lot or on the offense should be better next year. Um, you know, you get Josh Burrell back uh, from his injury this year. Uh, Malik McLean's a year older, which will be big for him. It'll also uh, be nice to have McLean being able to take, take on number two or number three corners instead of number one or number two corners. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I Travis Hunter's gonna play receiver. There's no doubt about that in my mind that he'll take reps there. I don't. We'll see how many, but uh, he's gonna play some receiver. Dustin Hill, if he shows up, I'm optimistic he's gonna be here in January, which will help. But he's a guy off of two years off of football. You know, the Pittman kid they're looking at in the portal. I think they're gonna continue to to be aggressive at wide receiver in the portal, knowing you need playmakers there. Um, I agree. The offensive line. It's what it boils down to for this team. Uh, we talked about it, and I know a lot of other places talked about it, that if you were missing a couple guys off that O-line uh, in a game, you pretty much take it to the bank that they were going to lose, and that really kind of played itself out all year long. So you got to hit it, and you got to hit it hard. Yeah, so um, to go back to this game, um, before we get too far away, yeah, did yeah, you yeah, notice – Two minutes. And AB's got to head out for a second – or in a second. But did you notice this formation – they would do like from us, yeah, the diamond. Yeah, they did the diamond a lot, and then they would just uh, yeah, do a did. quads mm-hmm. look. Yeah, and then even then motion this guy over, mm-hmm. and then roll out. I thought that was very interesting. Um, they they were doing everything. They they I mean they uh, they clearly didn't think they could block Florida. Uh, they, I mean they couldn't. No, they couldn't, and ultimately they were correct. Uh, and they did the same crap last week against Boston College, and ultimately they were correct. I mean. You couldn't block Boston College. You sure as hell weren't blocking Florida. That that's why I don't know. There's been some folks like this, the, you know, Mike and Dillingham suck and they didn't do a good enough job. And I think Adam Floor's got a little bit of fair criticism of this game. I thought there were opportunities to blitz Florida and try to heat them up a little bit, especially as much as the quarterbacks were turning the ball over. Um, special teams obviously were a mess, but I, offense is so they're just so handcuffed. You don't have a really good you don't have a good wide receiver at all. You don't have a good one. Uh, your tight ends are meh. Uh, you know, I think Jay Sean Corbin's dinged up. Uh, he he hasn't looked right in a couple weeks, in my opinion. But your offensive line is just man. They, those are five guys that are trying really hard, but that's all they're doing is trying really hard because they just are so beat up. I mean, Dylan Gibbons has been a miracle to play since like week three. Um, DLT, you know, you have he hasn't been the same all year. You could he wasn't even dressed today. Darius Washington, they thought he tore his ACL on the field last week. Um, it was a miracle he even played. Marie Smith, uh, you know. It, was that just, Scott at tackle today? Yeah, Robert he's, Scott at left tackle. He was getting worked um, yep. pretty consistent. Um, yep. And you got and you have legitimate probably round one, round two defensive ends that they were going against, and they beat the crap out of them. Yeah, so in, in that in that aspect, they have um, – they had a lot of talent there um, and yep. matched up well against our talent, our lack of, of talent. Um, 
But in the same like in the same way, I, I don't think I wasn't impressed by what Florida was doing offensively. I think Florida State's defense was pretty solid, and um, when you hold a team like Florida to to twenty four points, you expect to be able to win that game. Um, yeah. And you didn't. So. Yeah. Uh, I think AB is going to have to head out here Yeah, guys, soon. I got to go. Um, so he's going to head out. I will stay on uh, for a next minute, answer some questions. Uh, but I don't want to draw this out too long. <laughs> cause no, super I'm... appreciate you guys, man. Uh, thank you so much for this year. It's been incredible. Uh, off-season content is going to continue. Um, yep. Keep... We'll see you all we'll see y'all for the film review. Do your thing, Kev. See you, buddy. Yep, see you. All right, so um, I'm free to answer any questions you guys might have. Uh, I might just start ramble up for a little bit about this game uh, and about the season as a whole. I think I think Florida State, uh, there's some good and some bad. I think we've at least cemented in most of the fan bases. I know in my my mind, um, Norvell is the guy for f- the f- foreseeable future. Uh, this program seems to be moving upwards. Um, it seems to, in general, be making less stupid mistakes, doing the little things right. Um, with the amount of talent you can bring in in this state, uh, I think one of the most important things to be able to do is to be able to uh, instill some discipline in the program and a, and a good locker room culture, and I think those two things are, are definitely positives going into next season. Uh, whether you can bring in enough talent to continue uh, to win ball games or, or or win more ball games last year than this year is 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 up to be decided. Um, will Florida State go after a quarterback in the portal? Uh, probably. Um, it never hurts to have another quarterback come in. I don't think you're right now seeing all of the. You're not. You don't have all the quarterback depth you you necessarily want at this point in time. Um, what is Jordan Travis's ceiling. I think that he's a top 30, top 40 quarterback as of now. Um, but he did come along as a passer this season. So if he makes another step forward, you might see that change. Um, it's also really difficult to evaluate a quarterback uh, free from his surrounding cast. And this year, realistically, he didn't have much to work with around him at, at the wide receiver or, or offensive line positions. So, um, it's really difficult to say, hey, if you put this kid on Alabama's team, what would happen, right? Um, I'm 100% confident that if you put Jordan Travis behind center at the University of Georgia this year, he's an undefeated quarterback. That that that's There's no doubt in my mind that he's, he's as good as the kid that, that Georgia has. But um, when you're Florida State and you're competing at a talent deficit because of your two – transition classes you need someone that's going to win you ball games at the quarterback position uh and not someone that can just game manage their way to victories like you can if you're a georgia or an alabama so uh, i think his ceiling is a, is a top top 20 25 quarterback which is good enough to be a top a top team depending on how much talent is around him um king mac they're still pumping sunshine give it another season uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Um, I think Guns might be a Florida fan. I'm not sure, but welcome if you are. Uh, five and seven in a down year conference wide improvement or stagnation. Um, I wouldn't call this necessarily a down year for the ACC. I think they started off slowly, but um, especially the Atlantic this year. And Florida State schedule, uh, you face several teams that are kind of in that like top twenty-five, top thirty-five region, which is a pretty like. You faced a bunch of teams that were one half step better than you this year, right? You faced an NC State team that's a top twenty-five team. You faced a UNC team that on a good day is a top twenty-five team. You faced a Wake Forest team that's a top twenty-five team. You faced a Miami team that's a top twenty-five team. You faced a. Notre Dame team that's top 25 team, a Clemson team that's a top 25 team. Um, you faced a ton of teams that were in that like 25 to 35, 45 region of of teams that were are very solid teams. You faced four or five future NFL quarterbacks. Um, I, I don't think that this was necessarily a down year. Um, 
so for the ACC, you you, you faced a faced a pretty daunting s- schedule um, for ACC standards, and and it just so happened to be one where there was no off weeks, there was no Vanderbilts that you got to face midway through the season, uh, except for UMass, which kind of doesn't count because people, you know, is UMass. Um, so. <clears throat> How fragile is JT? Uh, he's as fragile as anybody that's going to be taking huge hits. He needs to learn how to get rid of the football. Um, he needs to learn when he can be Superman and uh, when he has to save himself and save the ball. I think he has gotten better at that, but uh, whether or not he's a complete project product in that um, category, well, he's definitely not. So uh, that's that's a personal thing. It's less that he's too fragile and more that he needs to learn to protect himself. Um uh, that is a skill in and of itself. <clears throat> uh, I don't see a change in winning in 22-23 with Jermaine and Kier leaving for NFL. We might have to win two games without them. Um, we might have won two games without them. Um, so, yeah, to address that, uh, you didn't know those guys' names last year. So... Um, at this point in time, you didn't know who Jermaine Johnson or Keir Thomas were. So I would argue it wasn't Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas that made this team necessarily, although they were great players, and I'm very thankful that they came to Florida State. It was the fact that uh, Mike Norvell and company were able to see them at another school where they weren't getting what they needed and poach them and bring them here and develop them and and incorporate them into a scheme where they could be successful. So while they were very special players that were brought in, uh, I think you can't. Uh, it's not like these were players that were recruited by a previous staff that um, are irreplaceable. Uh, these are guys that were brought in by the guys that are coaching today, and you have to kind of just figure that uh, if they were able to find scout and recruit in those guys, um, then they'll be able to do it again. And the good news about this season is there's a lot of turnover at places that historically recruit well. So uh, your USC, your Florida, your uh, LSU, and there's a good chance that you might be able to pick off some kids from those schools uh, as their coaching changes happen. Um, Biggest positive for FSU going into the next season? Uh, I said it before. Discipline uh, is improving, and also the recruiting is looking really solid for a team that just finished 5-7. and seven. So if you can bring in some top-end talent to infuse into this roster, uh, alongside a, a coaching staff that's shown that they're willing to reach into the JUCO and the transfer portal to, to supplement a roster pretty effectively, um, I, I think that's the, the positive that you're looking for uh, moving forward. Can you recruit? Can you bring in the portal to supplement that recruiting um, because I, I think the X's and O's are pretty solid under these guys. I mean, I'm not going to say that they're they're the best X's and O's coaches out there. Um, but they're solid enough for at Florida State for you to be able to compete in the Atlantic Coast Conference uh, with the talent you should be able to bring in. Um, with losing... With losing Thomas and Johnson off the defensive line, what position do you think defense will need to step up to be decent? Um, all of them. I think they all need to be better. Luckily, you have a lot of young defensive backs that are improving, uh, potentially bringing in some good defensive backs uh, from the uh, recruiting classes. And defensive back is the kind of place where you can plug and play a freshman, as you saw with Marion Cooper and Kevin Knowles, who were not particularly highly recruited kids. Um so that's going to have to improve if you want to be better. Akeem Dent took some strides. Um, and I think it's something that will get better as you bring McCall in and whether or not Travis Hunter plays any in the secondary. Uh, that's that's a place that uh, you might see another transfer or two come in to, to supplement that because it's clear that that's something that they really hope to strengthen. Uh, I think personally 46 needs to either gain or lose some weight, uh, decide if he wants to be a defensive lineman or a linebacker because right now he's uh, kind of a tweener and that's hurting him um, I think linebacker in in particular is a position that needs to be uh, addressed it'd be really nice to have one or two pass rushers in that are difference makers like uh, Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas however um, I also think that linebacker is a very important uh, area of need for this team <clears throat> 
Uh, this whole season, the Knowles played every game close. I'm proud of them for their heart. <laughs> Got to take the next step, Mr. Norvell. Uh, I echo that sentiment. Lots of heart. Uh, you can see that these kids really believe in what's happening in Tallahassee, and that's that's a nice change of direction from where they were a few years ago. Um, going to a bowl isn't a huge accomplishment. 80, accomplishment, 84 spots for 130 teams. Uh, sure, but whatever. Uh, very rare to find a defensive end like Jermaine. He'll be a first-round pick. Those kind of players are hard to find. You're exactly right. So uh, there's a good chance that we will not find a first-round pick uh, for a defensive end. Fortunately, you don't need a first-round pick at defensive end to win football games. Um, but you can't have... <laughs> you need you need talent everywhere else, and you need you need kind of a bolstered, more balanced roster going into the year next year. Um, and I think there's a couple areas of need specifically that could be addressed that would uh, make it so you're not living or dying off of uh, one defensive lineman being in and out of the game. I think Jermaine Johnson was by far the most important player on this defense and by far the most impactful player on this defense, but I by no means think that he was the defense. Um, uh, the people that are saying that uh, are giving uh, into world rumors since 11 will not be suiting it for Florida State next year are probably people that watch too much ESPN um, who likes to sell these one-player narratives when there's 11 players on the field. Um, there were plenty of snaps this year, probably about a third of them, where Jordan, uh, Jermaine Johnson was not in the game. Um, the world didn't end. We didn't give up touchdowns every time. 11 wasn't on the field, and uh, in theory, every position besides defensive end next year should be improving. So uh, we'll see if that makes any difference. Dylan Gabriel would be fun. Uh, I don't know how he would be post-injury, uh, so I don't know if that's something they're looking at or not. Uh, if JT has become the emotional leader of this team, it might not be worth it, but you, you never know. Um, worth it in the sense of do you want to spend resources to bring a kid like that in here um, when you could address other positions of need? I don't know what the, the directives of this coaching staff is. Um there's a chance we get a charity bowl. Uh, I do think that uh, our APR is where it needs to be to get one, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know when or where we figured that out. So uh, I'm not the person to ask. I'm the person that watches a lot of football and can tell you uh, what a three technique tackle does. Um, so. <clears throat> If FSU can guarantee a certain number of tickets purchased for a bowl, there could be a chance they get into a bowl. That would be nice. I'm so proud of the improvement this season. Uh, same here. Um, so we need 15 practices for this team. That would be huge. It would be really nice to have. Um, so it would be it would be a, a change, a difference maker, and a, a um, something that a lot of the young players on this team need and haven't had in a while. And so, uh, yeah, I agree. It would be huge. And that's why it's a bummer that they lost this game because that was an automatic bid to a bowl game. And uh, now you have lost that. <laughs> automatic, uh, a virtual tip jar. Unfortunately, um, I went to the Florida game today. I, I saw the kind of... Uh, fan base that they have and I think they've got more tips to be giving out um how do you find APR uh yeah so I don't think our APR is great um I don't think it's last in the league like it was um but I I haven't been keeping track of that uh thanks to Yagatsu for <laughs> for APR still pretty low down the list so it's not terribly likely um yeah that's exactly right so I think I'm going to hop off uh thank you guys for uh, joining me here, um, it was an incredible season. Uh, I saw this channel's subscribers jump up, continue to tell friends about it. Uh, we're going to be making stuff in the off season, going back through all these games, kind of trying to tell you what to expect, probably trying to answer a lot of those questions about Jermaine Johnson and um, recruiting as they come up. Uh, we do a lot of uh, recruiting stuff as it pops up. So as, as recruits come in, uh, new recruits come in, you'll see me and AB hop on and we'll do uh, reviews of, of their abilities and where they might slide, on, slide into this scheme uh, that at this point I think AB and I know about as well as uh, most anybody um, besides the coaches themselves and the players themselves. 
Uh, so uh, join us for a lot of the recruiting class. Uh, thanks for uh, being here and joining our streams. Uh, I'm sorry, AB had to hop off early. I know I'm uh, just one part of a, a big puzzle that is the success of this channel. And so uh, I thank you guys. And um, I will probably see you soon. We'll probably do a postseason mailbag sometime in the next week or so. And we will have a film review of this game in the next two days. So if you want to watch your last little bit of FSU football, um, for for the off season then then join us then uh so thanks for joining us uh and